The Fox Texas trio is back. Let's start with impeachment. Rudy Koski, will Republicans lose their jobs because of this impeachment vote? You know, it really depends on who shows up uh, at the polls. Uh, you know, historically, uh, voter turnout has been low, even on big elections. So um, it just turns out on voter turnout, I think, Stephen. All right, Greg Grugan, you know, there was a super majority, 60 Republicans, 61 Democrats. Who gets the last laugh, Kim Paxton and the Texas GOP or the members who voted to impeach? Not sure, Stephen. My head is still spinning at the vitriol and open hostility being publicly blasted at House Republicans who voted for impeachment. Extremely conservative members are being called traitors and turncoats and a lot worse and what sounds an awful lot like partial excommunication from the Texas GOP. It's almost like watching a coyote chew off its leg to get out of a trap. Look, if Texas Republicans keep casting out folks who don't absolutely toe the far right line on Paxton or Trump for that matter, they're in for some long-term trouble. That said, a two-thirds vote in the incredibly conservative Texas Senate is a hefty peak to scale, and there's very little political advantage for Dan Patrick given the blowback from the increasingly radical base. So that's my take right now. Rudy Koski, let's transition to the special session. It appears Speaker Dave Phelan may have won round one. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to get that image of the coyote that Greg just mentioned out of my mind. I'm going to change my word to chupacabra then, right? <laughs> let's get back to your question. It was a great political move Tuesday by the Speaker in the House, but it was made because the Lieutenant Governor left the back door open for the House to bolt out of because the Senate rec recessed first. You know, they couldn't move their border bill forward at the same time that they passed their tax plan. And before all that happened, you got to remember the lieutenant governor spent the morning calling out the speaker, calling out House Republicans, poking the bear. So the bear poked back, bear ate him, kind of. Well, the real fallout, I think, may involve the relationship between Patrick and Governor Abbott. The lieutenant governor also called out Abbott for uh, saying that he's misinformed supporting the House plan. So here's my question uh, going into this new week. Has the Texas Big Three become the Three Stooges? Or is all this a ploy to do a quid pro quo to eventually get school choice tuition funding through the House? Another reason why my word is diversion. Stephen? Greg Grugan, final question goes to you. Um, it appears Governor Abbott endorsed the House's version when it comes to property tax, but Dan Patrick said, okay, it still has to go through us. What does Dan Patrick have to lose here? Look, a lot. No way Patrick lets anything through without a significant increase in the homestead exemption. I'll bet the ranch on that. Why? Because it's permanent tax relief versus the House compression plan, which we're told will eventually go away. I remember shortly before the session, Speaker Phelan came to Houston and said nearly all of the $33 billion surplus came from sales tax and none of it from property tax. So instead of rebating the money to the widest possible swath of Texans, it sure like looks like Phelan's uh, going to give a big jackpot to corporations and big property owners. I hate to cut you off there, Greg. That's all the time we have to see this interview or any of our past ones. You can go to our station's YouTube channels. And continue the conversation with us on social media. There's no summer vacation from Texas politics, so join us next week for Texas The Issue Is.